I'm uh, William Pike. I'm a director of Radio Africa and Star Publications. That Star Publications that produces the Star newspaper, and Radio Africa is a collection of radios, including Kiss, Classic, Jambo, East FM, and others, and a TV station, uh, the Bamba TV platform. Infertility is a, a worldwide problem, and so psychologically it's obviously very distressing. I think in uh, Europe in the last 30 years, it's become um, very normal to go for IVF treatment or help in dealing with infertility. Whereas in Africa, firstly, there's, I think, a lot of ignorance about what can be done, uh, that it's not the end of the world. And secondly, uh, there's a certain amount of discrimination and prejudice against people who are women who are infertile or indeed men who are infertile but of course the men who are infertile normally pretend it's the woman who's the problem not them. I think uh, when women tell their personal stories I think it makes a huge difference. I, I saw one of the Merck videos about helping women in Uganda um, set up businesses, which is very good, and I think it, it was a story about how uh, they'd recovered their confidence after being given economic opportunities. But I think what is very, most illuminating is when a woman, and I would hope eventually a man, uh, tells her or his personal story. And um, so I watched the one with Joyce Lay, the politician, who I think is also an ambassador for Merck more than a mother. And I found her story uh, very touching, um, partly because uh, you have to be very brave to come out with all those details about not having fallopian tubes or losing your uterus. And I thought it was riveting. It uh, really goes to the heart. So when some people are talking about their personal experiences, especially if it's someone well known who you imagine doesn't have problems, and then suddenly you see she's got a deep problem, that's touching and moving. And I think it's what will ultimately encourage more people to be open about the issue of infertility. I think it's a very ambitious campaign and um, obviously it's something that needs to be dealt with and tackled. Uh, it's very good that Merck is tackling it, but what I would hope is that it would provoke ministries of health and uh, politicians, uh, other leaders, to take up the issue. Because I think what, uh, maybe Merck can be the spark that lights the fire, but I don't think Merck can do it on its own. But obviously, the match that lights the fire is perhaps the most important bit of all. I think it's over ambitious to expect media to change society. But I think what media can do is make good information available and give access uh, to information. It's, that's why it's called mass media, you re reach the masses. So I think these stories should be made more available and I think that's what we can do and what we can work on. Radio Africa, which is the parent of the star, uh, was contacted and um, yeah, we were keen to cooperate because um, I think we have a, a lot of uh, ladies working in our organization, including uh, uh, presenters uh, on radio who are well known and popular. Um, we try to be a socially progressive organization, have corporate social responsibility. So that's why it's good to 
to make a social contribution as perhaps not in cash terms but in, in other terms by supporting initiatives like this. Um, what I would tell the journalists is they should realise it's a, a big issue but it's actually a very interesting issue because what I think drives journalists or media houses or media outlets is they want to get readers or they want to get traffic or they want to get viewers and this infertility is actually a subject of immense interest to many people because I think almost everyone knows someone who's had problems having a baby so it's not like it's some something like Ebola it's something that's much more present for us and it's a, it's a topic that will get a lot of uh, um, interest. Fertility is obviously also a huge, highly valued in Africa, culturally. So it's something that people will really appreciate. So I, I think it's something that journalists should not ignore. They should actually embrace it, because it'll make a good story that lots of people will want to read or look at. But I think the best way to break the taboo is if we can find people who are willing to talk and not only give them a space to express themselves publicly, but also applaud them. Because I think it's that personal testimony. When it's seen on video, especially, uh, that really uh, pulls the heartstrings and actually causes people to change their mind. What I actually believe in is giving people the information and letting them decide. Also, letting people say what they think and somehow by providing a forum for discussion in newspapers or websites or TV or whatever or radio, somehow society arrives at a consensus on issues so that people become more informed and, and they discuss how they want to proceed with issues. And indeed, is it right or wrong to have a surrogate mother in Kenya? And if you have a surrogate mother, is it right or wrong for the, the other mother to claim the child as her own? You, society needs to debate these issues and you'll get a lot of one-sided comments one way or another, but I believe that in the end, we work towards some kind of consensus. So I believe in information and debate as open as possible with as little censorship as possible.